Hello, this is uh, Reverend Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. coming to you again. Well, I had some disturb uh, last night. Well, of course, I post a new video about the truth behind 2 Corinthians 3.10 and how there are many people out there that profess to be Christians that take that Bible verse totally out of context. Well, today I want to I want to tell you what had happened was on my ministry's site on Facebook on my Facebook page I have my ministry site and I post things Bible verses, how they are, and, and things that's, you know, happening. You see, I'm writing a book. Okay? I'm writing a book about how people's attitudes, attitudes and more values, have changed since I was born in 1964 to now. course it's been going on long before but uh, long story short it has changed drastically since 2000 2001 especially when God sent his harbinger to try to get us to wake up and stop aborting and killing innocent unborn children here's a book that was written by a mosaic Jewish man rabbi Jonathan Kahn called the harbinger get it and read it it is a good book it's fictional but it's the truth about what has happened and what is happening in our nation Isaiah 910 was quoted the day after by Senator Tom Daschle in our uh, Senate house was quoted by him Isaiah 910 actually was referring to when Israel decide to, that they are going to rebuild their nation bigger and better without God. They were basically mocking God and saying that we're better than you, God. We don't need you, God. We know more than you do, God. Well, that's what's happening today. People are constantly taking Bible verses God's word out of context. You are basically putting your own words in God's mouth. Well, it's not happening. I'm not just a, a pastor, evangelist, minister. I'm a prophet of God's word. The truth of God's word. The truth is supposed to set you free, but a lot of you don't want to be free. A lot of you people do not want to be free. My cat, she, she likes to calm me down when she thinks I'm upset. Well, yeah, I'm upset because I got this, um, these um, messages on Facebook the other day from a uh, thing, that, a story that I wrote here. I was quoting Bible verses in regards to um, how people are are acting in the last days and uh, then all of a sudden I get this uh, message from this woman here basically saying that I'm constantly asking for money which I'm not constantly asking for money I'm asking for help not money help help there's a difference so I, I quote her some more Bible verses. 
I quoted her the truth about uh, how we are supposed to be helping one another. Let me give you an example. My vehicle was broke down. My neighbor was a devout uh, Christian woman that went to the uh, Nazarene church. I walked over and I asked her if she could uh, take me somewhere to get some food because we were out, out of some stuff. And all she did was basically slam the door in my face. She didn't slam it, but she shut the door in my face after she told me that she would uh, talk to her. Um, basically, she would pray about it. I asked her if she could, you know, get a hold of her pastor to see if, uh, you know, her church could help. All she did was say, I will pray about it. Well, that is the same thing in, um, uh, let me find it here. It's in, um, James 2, 14 through 24. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and is lacking daily food, the one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them things needed for their body. What good is that? So, also, so... So also, excuse me, so also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. Duh. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from works and I will show you my faith by, 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 by my works. In other words, people, what that means is, oh, you can go around and say, I have faith in God. I have faith in God. I have faith in God that He will take care of me. I have faith in God that, that He will give me strength so I can have a good paying job. I, I have faith that uh, you know, nothing bad will happen to me, that my health will be good. I, I have faith. I have faith. Because that is what the Bible says. That we're supposed to have faith like a mustard seed. And also, we're supposed to work and support ourselves. Let's get real here, people. Let's get real. All throughout the Bible, God has commanded people to do something that would probably have killed them. Like the lady that gave the prophet in the Old Testament her last wheat that she had. But the prophet told her, the prophet told her, God said, you know, to feed him. So she baked him some bread. Long story short, she had more wheat than what she could handle after she did what God had commanded her to do. And that was to help and feed the hungry prophet. Now, people don't want to do that no more. People don't want to go above and beyond their giving to their church. They don't want to go above and beyond their uh, tithes. They think that's all you got to do. Just give 10% and that's it. Nothing else. I don't want to do anything else because the Bible doesn't say that. Yes, it does. From cover to cover, it says it. 
You're supposed to give until it hurts. Now, yeah, I have asked people for help. I'm not a well man. I can't lift anything over 25 pounds. I have spina bifida occulta. Spondylothesis grade 2. Uh, scoliosis. My back is not in good shape at all, people. I have other health problems. Gas reflux disease. Barrett's esophageal. Which means I'm high risk for esophagus cancer. I also have diabetes. That I is not from 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 me being, you know, a little little overweight, as uh, maybe some of you can, you know, see here. Yeah, I have a little belly. I only weigh about uh, 210 to 220 pounds. I'm not really humongous, and I never grew up fat. I was skinny. The reason why I got this belly was because of the fact my sugar was always bottoming out on me. I had hypoglycemia. Low blood sugar. And of course, what did they tell you to do back then? Eat peanut butter, eat peanut butter, eat peanut butter. When your sugar goes down, eat peanut butter. So that's what I was doing, eating peanut butter. Well, peanut butter gave me the belly. Not beer, because I don't drink beer. I don't like beer. So it's not a beer belly. And it's not from being lazy. I had a newspaper route for 11 years. And I rode my bicycle up and down hills. I had the hilly part of Newcomers Town, Ohio. After that newspaper route, I got a job as a security officer. Was wrongfully fired from my job because my super I had the flu. My supervisor added 10 more days on me. Instead of 6 days, she said I was off work for 16 days without a valid excuse. Well, later on, guess what? I after I filed for unemployment and I got my unemployment, I saw her and her other uh, employees under her at the unemployment office. My God got her back for what she did to me. I have seen the move in my, of my God in my life many times. When I unexpect, when when I least expected it, I got twenty dollars in the mail. Not today. You ask for help, and people find some kind of a reason, some kind of a reason not to do what God has commanded them to do. They quote Bible verses out of context. This person asked me. What do I do to give? What do I do to give? Well, let me sh sh show you here. Okay? American Red Cross. And, and uh, uh, Disaster Relief. Uh, Hurricane Katrina. And Rita. Mississippi 2005. I volunteer, or I did volunteer, and I'm currently trying to get back into volunteering. But there's been a lot of issues because of changes going on with the Red Cross they can enter my name into the computer system long story short so and I uh, got to take a lot of my training all over again because now uh, they say my training's too old I am also an amateur radio operator there's my amateur radio right there two meter amateur radio I also monitor channel 9 of the CB radio. And I also monitor my police scanner, many emergency frequencies. There's my weather radio, my handheld scanner, my uh, 2 meter handheld radio that I use in emergencies, my uh, power supply for my uh, ham radio. I want to show you something else too. I had to take what's called uh, the NIMS training from uh, uh, the Homeland Security. I 
I also wanted to show you also real quick if, that uh, I'm a uh, what's called a uh, Skywarn Storm Spotter. Well, I'm advanced actually, as my advanced Skywarn Storm Spotting certificate. She she had she had asked me. She had asked me what I'm doing to better my life, to, to make my life better. Well, I have trained. I've took many home courses in uh, many uh, fields like uh, religion. But I've also been to college. Belmont Technical College, I mean, excuse me, Mansville Business College for uh, private security and investigations training that I earned my uh, OPT state certification as a private security officer. I also ha uh, have, uh, as soon as I find it, besides my ministerial certificates, I took training in uh, Theophostic uh, Prayer Ministry. My Soul Clinics license from the Universal Life Church to be able to do pastoral counseling. Here's my Doctor of Philosophy degree, which is legal and binding, that I studied for many, many, many years For his master's degree in religion. Book of Revelation. Doctor of uh, Divinity degree. But most recently, most recently I have also studied and earned a diploma in psychology and social work from Stratford Career Institute and I went to Belmont Technical College and earned a degree in uh, mental health technology. Well, it's called Applied Science. So yeah, I, I had a job recently also in 2010 where I was using my degree that I earned through the college but I was working as what they call a uh, job coach. Working in the, during the summer down in in Ohio. And uh, working with kids. My supervisor, she was a, another piece of work as well. You know, wearing these short summer dresses, short summer skirts, showing uh, her thigh and and trying to be basically as sexy as she can. And, uh, well, in the meantime, she was always putting the disabled kids down, especially this one disabled boy. Uh, he was in the early, he was like 19, something like that. But because he couldn't tie his shoes, and he was wearing shoes that had Velcro, and, uh, the Velcro kept coming undone. She's constantly putting him down. Well, it was my job, my job, to lift him up and to defend him. Then, uh, we had to go uh, from Kershockton down to uh, um, Belmont County to uh, the college down there because my fiance wife was taking uh, classes down there and they would not release her uh, transcript to another college unless she went and got it herself which was kind of stupid they usually release them but they didn't want to release it without her getting it so after my job was done that day, 
uh, my basically last day on the job there. That day, that day, sh my fiance went with me. I only worked a half a day, four hours a day. I got paid uh, ten dollars and fifty cents an hour. Long story short, yeah, it was a good paying job. I lost more than half of my uh, social security because I was working. And then, uh, long story short, uh, because I took my fiance with me down to this shopping plaza and she was, you know, walking around looking at all the stores and then she came into the store that I was working at to leave a uh, drink for me. They thought, oh, that was, uh, they thought it was wrong, basically. They thought it was wrong. They thought it was breach of confidentiality. Well, there had been people from Newcomers Town that knows me that went to that store shopping in Coshocton. What am I supposed to do? Tell everybody that knows me in, in, the, in Newcomers Town, Ohio? Not to go to Big Lots in Coshocton and shop while I'm working there? You know what? I'm not that moronic like they are and like, like some other people are. I'm not that moronic. I'm not that stupid. I'm not going to tell people that they can't shop somewhere when they want to.